back to another episode of Dying Light. Okay, so if you're wondering, I, I, you know, usually I always cut things pretty perfectly to the point where you guys will never be able to know that half the time I disappeared. Sometimes I'm lazy and it's pretty obvious, but usually I always try to make sure it's not obvious at all. But in the last episode, I had to go deal with the situation. We've been getting like a bear problem right now where it's been like coming in and stealing our trash. So we called a game warden? Yeah, I think that's what it was. To come in and help us out, to put a trap and everything so they can capture it and maybe release it somewhere else or help it. Because um, it seemed like it was a bit mangy, but he says he's probably just shedding right now. So that could be it. But... Um... Inventory and where is it? Where is it? Oh no, blueprints. So yeah, like we had a game warden um, come in to kind of like deal with the whole issue. So hopefully, um, that was weird. I heard something weird. Um, maybe I'll check that out a bit later. Um, well, I'm hoping. <laughs> Freaking sprinters. Just more are coming! What the frick? I turn on the fence just to deal with this issue. Oh my gosh, there's so many. They're starting to overwhelm me. I'm going to die. Oh my gosh, this is like the common issue. It's, it's just like there's too many to deal with. There's gotta be something I can do. I should be safe in here. I I thought turning on that would like stopped like anything else from coming in. I'm kind of annoyed that wasn't the case. Um. Is 
So where are they? I can catch them by surprise. Where are they in this lab, though? <laughs> but yeah. The worst part is we have like two dogs. One of them, oh my gosh, thank goodness, is so quiet and nice. The other one, I have, I probably complained about before. Actually, yeah, I have. And, um, back in Bloodborne, just super noisy. We, we've tried a lot of ways to try to deal with it, but not a lot of them really stick. Like, some of them work for a while, but then as soon as he realizes, like, if he can get away with it, or, um, he can somehow avoid it, then he'll do everything he can to avoid it. So he's really smart. Like, that's the issue. He's smart. And because he's smart, he knows how to get away with things. <clears throat> Which is awful. I think he was a bit too pampered. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, but that's what sucks. So, of course, when the warden came in, he was just like constantly barking, barking, barking. And he will not stop. He will literally probably make himself pass out just so he can get to it. saying that it's his territory. Which it's not, of course. It was awesome when the dude finally left. Um, not that he left. And, you know, awesome that he came up. It was awesome when every left, you know, he's the dog finally just like, no one, I give up, I'm sitting down. <laughs> it's like, can you give up, like, I don't know, like five minutes ago? You know, for my ears? I, I basically treated him like a horse, and, you know, it did work, you know, by, like, trying to soothe him. And, like, shh, whoa, it's gonna calm down. If you're wondering how that possibly even could work, it did. <laughs> so screw you. <laughs> it did work. Got him to shut up for a bit. What am I supposed to do? He said go to the slabs to go deal with some dudes, but they aren't here. <laughs> But yeah, we have uh, now like a, a bear trap now, and I'm hoping that they'll capture it and they can deal with it. I'm hoping it'll be okay. Because yeah, even though it is being quite annoying, um, I still don't want any harm to come to the animal. Because you know, it's just it's just going by and living. So hopefully we can, if it does work and it don't come back, sweet, but hopefully we can figure out a way to keep it from coming, um, to keep coming back of some, or any other animals by that nature. Because again, they're just living animals just having a life. <laughs> Trying to figure out... It's Kareem on the radio. Tamdi, answer me. What's going on out there? What's wrong with you? Report your position. <sighs> feeling this was going to be annoying. Major lag I've gotten yet. What's wrong with you? Report your position. You get lost? Get your asses back here then. Gabriel's a state five. Come in through the basement. Is that you, Ozan? 
Oh, this is five. Okay, I didn't even know there was numbers on this one. We just need to find the basement. Ah, jeez. I was about to say <laughs> Frick, is this part of an apartment? Damn. Got him! Yes! <laughs> it's over when I say it's over! One more. There you are. Said they cut the power to the elevator just in case, so I'm guessing that won't work. I hate when I have to spam. Obviously, this was in the age of the spam! Kareem, it's Crane. Drop your weapon or you're dead. What the hell's your problem? 
This doesn't concern you. Sorry, Kareem, but Errol Asani is my concern. You're working for him? <laughs> You're a fool. I was his bodyguard, okay? After everything got fucked up and they built the wall, we got overrun. He got bitten on the leg. I took him to Randall, the only doctor I knew in the slums, and we cut it off. Clean. It was the only way. He would have turned if we hadn't done it. But the stubborn bastard never forgave us. So, we parted ways. So why are you trying to track him down now? Early on, the authorities evac all the political bigwigs out of the zone. Errol told us there was a chopper on the way to take us out with him. Then he got bitten. And with all the shit that happened after that, we missed the flight. But after you turned on the transmitter, we heard Errol asking for evac. And a couple of days ago, somebody responded. From outside. The old bastard's got a flight out, and I want a seat on it. Right, what about Rice? Does he care about this guy? Not a rat's ass. This was my business. I just want to get out of Haran. Yeah, well, looks like you won't be making that flight, huh? That had already dawned on me. But I'd like to walk out of here. Look, if I see you again, I'm gonna assume the worst. You got it? Fair enough. Good luck, Crane. You're going to need it. Huh. <sighs> so he lied to us? All right, let's see if it's nighttime or not. <sighs> One thing I know for sure, because anytime I tell a story about like what's going on outside, I always feel like I do a bad job, and I always worry that because I suck at telling stuff, um, it always sounds a lot worse than it is. I always worry about that. Like, did I tell it right? Does it sound right? What not? I have a hard time understanding people, and sometimes I have a... I, well, I really have a hard time explaining people so they can understand me. It's a double negative, really, for me. supposed to be there just for it to start. I'd be annoyed if so. If they could stay at that. So I wanna check something. No, it doesn't okay. I was just checking if it stated anything or not, it doesn't. At least not that I can notice. <laughs> Did you find them? Yeah, I did. Kareem's take on losing your leg was a bit different than yours. So, you talked to him. Edward was right. You do talk too much. You should leave the talking to people like me, and I'll leave the killing to people like you. However, Kareem was my bodyguard. He allowed me to get bitten, but I don't really blame him for that. Hey, he saved your life. By hacking off my leg? The morning I was bitten was the same day they began dropping suppressants. You understand? I told him the antigen drops would begin within hours. All they had to do was wait. Instead, he listened to that idiot doctor of his, and Karim held me down as the butcher chopped off my leg. Now he thinks I should fly him out of here. Well, I told him that's not gonna happen. You should have killed him. How about you leave the killing to people like me, huh? Quite right. I can get you out of here, Crane. Maybe I like it here. More likely you've made your own arrangements. Well, 
They won't work. You've been bitten. I can see it in your eyes. You'll never get past the NCOR quarantine. Past what? You see, you have no idea what's going on in the real world. Whoever you think you know, they're not political. And that's the only thing that's going to work now. You don't believe me? Then think of it as an ace up your sleeve. A backup plan. In case you haven't noticed, things don't always work out the way they're supposed to in this town. If I'm interested, what happens next? Two things. The first is we need to paint some markers on the rooftop. There's no paint around here, so you'll have to go out and find some. And the second thing is... Well, let's just say you'll be leaving here in a better way than when you arrived. Now, go find some paint. There's All right. a construction. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it like I did, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.